Oh, dear. It's the latest Discworld novel. Um, yeah, I think that about covers it. Sam Vimes goes on holiday and, unsurprisingly, runs into exactly the sort of crime guaranteed to smeg him off. Third-person past tense throughout with a tone that is best described as Discworldly. One issue that I have with the prose as a whole, though, is just how messy it feels. Quite a few sentences, paragraphs, even moments of dialogue are written in such a manner, often with extreme comma use, that for me it ruined the flow. Padding. The first thing I thought when I finished this novel was too much padding. And loathed though I am to say it, this novel is ruined by padding. Now, I'm not opposed to padding as a rule, provided that it makes me laugh or think or is in some way interesting. Indeed, a lot of the footnotes that Pratchett tends to put in his Discworld novels could be considered padding, but they usually make me laugh or think or are in some way interesting. But in Snuff, the padding is none of these things. More to the point, it robs moments of drama, it slows the pace to something that a snail would find embarrassing, and it generally smegs up a pair of great ideas. Firstly, dropping his grace, the Duke of Anx, Sir Samuel Vimes, commander of the City Watch and Blackboard Monitor, in the middle of a Jane Austen-esque situation is a great idea, ripe with comic potential. Sadly, Vimes only gets to really be Vimes on, as far as I could see, one occasion. And whilst it is a pretty damn funny scene, it shouldn't have been one of the only highlights. It should have been one of many highlights. Secondly, having Sam Vimes, working class copper who has just happened to have been elevated to a position of high authority, be that working class copper in trying to stop the abuse of the goblins is a great idea. Vimes has a strongly defined sense of right and wrong, but as we often see, sometimes something may be legally right, but morally reprehensible. And that is the exact situation that Vimes runs into with regards to the goblins. Now, this is dealt with somewhat, and there is a definite sense of satisfaction when all the resources at Vimes' command come together to start changing things for the better. The ultimate problem is that Pratchett can't seem to gel these two ideas together. I mean, he's done it before, uh, Reaper Man, Witches Abroad and The Fifth Elephant come to mind, but he fails to do it with snuff. As it stands, the first idea would be better suited to an Eric-esque novella, whilst the second idea would do well without the fish-out-of-water scenario of the first. In either case, it would have given the ideas some much-needed room to breathe and likely resulted in a better overall novel. Another major problem is the lack of an interesting, credible antagonist for Vimes to grapple with. The Mr. Big, if you like, behind it all is revealed pretty early on, but it's made pretty clear that Vimes can't touch him. A scant few pages later, it's made equally as clear that they can't touch Vimes. So instead, we end up with an off-the-shelf psychopath called Stratford, who is little more than a lackey in it all. And that wouldn't necessarily have been a bad thing, except that he isn't even introduced until about halfway through the novel, and even then it's only his name that's mentioned, and Vimes doesn't even encounter the man until the novel is almost over. And even when he does, he's a gross disappointment. And not to mention, the ending of the Stratford arc, if you will, is just so predictable and cliched, it's untrue. And finally, from a fan point of view at least, it frustrates me frustrates me that the regulars of the Ackmore Pork City Watch are wasted. Nobby Nobs and Fred Colon have a few scenes, but they're largely pointless. Captains Carrot and Angua, again, they have a couple of scenes in the novel, but quite frankly, if you change their names to Dempsey and Makepeace, or to Cagney and Lacey, or hell, to Columbo and Dr. Sloan, it wouldn't have made a damn difference as to how those scenes played out. City Watch novels have been consistently my favourite Discworld novels. You know, I love the characters, I, I love the situations they end up in, I, I, I just love them. And to read one where the City Watch could be written out with barely any changes to the story is saddening. There are some good points. Vimes getting to know the locals in the countryside does have its moments. Chief Constable Opshot certainly has potential as a character, and his mum is responsible for a couple of very decent gags. Plus, the goblins certainly are an interesting race with a morbidly fascinating culture and religion. But nevertheless, this novel feels padded to oblivion. Too many moments were more predictable than the drama in Bioshock, and 
overall, I found it a very big letdown.